my name is Diamond, and today I'm going to be reading to you one of the oldest creepypastas in the world, Squidward's Suicide. Arguably the scariest that there is out there. And to top it off, I'm also going to be playing a very old Spongebob game that looks kind of creepy. Just to add to the entertainment for you guys, I really wanted to make the first video of 2020 the greatest that it can be. If you're new to the channel, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. And I'm out here providing you guys with the quality and all this value that you can't find anywhere else. I'm literally reading this story at 3 a.m. for you guys. 3 a.m. 2020, January the 1st, dude. I'm out here hustling for you guys but anyways let's get into it <laughs> squidward suicide i just want to start off by saying if you want an answer at the end prepare to be disappointed there just isn't one i was an intern at nickelodeon studios for a year in 2005 for my degree in animation it wasn't paid of course most internships just weren't but it did have some perks beyond education to adults it may not seem like a big one but most kids at the time would shit themselves over it. Now since I worked directly with the editors and animators, I got to see the new episodes days before they aired. I'll get right to it without giving any unnecessary information. They had recently made the Spongebob movie and the entire staff was somewhat sapped of creativity, so it took them longer to start up the season. But the delay lasted longer for more uh, upsetting reasons. There was a problem with the series 4 premiere, that set everyone and everything back for several months. Me and two other interns were in the editing room along with the lead animators and sound editors for the final cut. We received the copy that was supposed to be Fear of the Krabby Patty and gathered around the screen to watch. Now, given that it isn't the final yet, animators often put a mock title card, somewhat of an inside joke for us, with phony oftentimes lewd titles such as How Sex Doesn't Work, <laughs> instead of Rockabye Bivalve when Spongebob and Patrick adopt a sea scallop. Nothing particularly funny but work related chuckles. So when we saw the title card Squidward Suicide, we didn't think it more than a morbid joke. One of the interns did a small throat laugh at it. The happy go lucky music plays as is normal. The story began with Squidward practicing his clarinet, hitting a few sour notes like normal. We hear Spongebob laughing outside and Squidward stops yelling at him to keep it down as he has a concert that night and needs to practice. Spongebob says, oh, okay, and goes to see Sandy with Patrick. The bubble splash screen comes up and we see the ending of Squidward's concert. This is when things begin to seem off. While playing, a few frames repeat themselves, but the sound doesn't. At this point, sound is synced up with animation, so yes, that's not common. But when he stops playing, the sound finishes as if the skip never happened. There is slight murmuring in the crowd before they begin to boo him. Not normal cartoon booing that is common in the show, but you can very clearly hear the malice in it. Squidward's in the full frame and looks visibly afraid. The shot goes to the crowd with Spongebob in the center frame. He too is booing, very much unlike him. That isn't the oddest thing though. What is odd is everyone had hyper-realistic eyes, very detailed, clearly not shots of real people's eyes, but something a bit more real than CGI. The pupils were red. Some of us looked at each other, obviously confused, but since we weren't the writers, we didn't question its appeal to the children yet. The shot goes to Squidward sitting on the edge of his bed, looking very forlorn. The view out of his porthole window is of a night sky that is not very long after the concert. The unsettling part is that at this point there is no sound, literally no sound, not even the feedback from the speakers in the room. It's as if the speakers were turned off, though their status showed them working perfectly. He just sat there, blinking in the silence for about 30 seconds. Then he started to sob softly. He put his hands, or tentacles, over his eyes and cried quietly for a full minute more. All the while, a sound in the background, very slowly growing from nothing to barely audible. It sounded like a slight breeze through a forest. The screen slowly begins to zoom in on his face. By slow, I mean it's only noticeable if you look at shots 10 seconds apart, side by side. His sobbing gets louder, more full of hurt and anger. The screen then twitches a bit as if it twists in on itself for a split second and then back to normal. The wind through the tree sound gets slowly louder and more severe, as if a storm is brewing somewhere. The eerie part is this sound and Squidward sobbing. 
it sounded so real as if the sound wasn't coming from the speakers but as if the speakers were holes the sound was coming through from the other side as good as sound as the studio likes to have oh my god that's a lot of as that is a lot of as this this writer come on man this is very difficult to read this is not a uh, one of those tongue twisters come on now anyways they don't purchase the equipment to be that good to produce sound of that quality below the sound of the wind and sobbing very faint something sounded like laughing it came at odd intervals and never lasted more than a second so if you had a hard time pinning it we watched this show twice so pardon me if things sound too specific but i've had time to think about them after 30 seconds of this the screen blurred and twitched violently and something flashed over the screen as if a single frame was replaced the lead animation editor paused and rewound frame by frame what we saw was horrible it was a still photo of a dead child he couldn't have been more than six the face was mangled and bloodied one eye dangling over his upturned face popped he was naked down to his underwear his stomach crudely cut open and his intros laying beside him he was lying on some pavement that was probably a road the most upsetting part was that there was a shadow of the photographer there was no crime tape no evidence tags or markers and the angle was completely off for a shot designed to be evidence it would seem the photographer was the person responsible for the child's death we were of course mortified but pressed on hoping that it was just a sick joke the screen flipped back to squidward still sobbing louder than before and half body in frame there was now what appeared to be blood running down his face from his eyes the blood was also done in a hyper realistic style looking as if if you touched it you'd get blood on your fingers the wind sounded now as if there was a gale blowing through the forest there was even snapping sounds of branches the laughing a deep baritone lasting at longer intervals and coming more frequently after about 20 seconds the screen again twisted and showed a single frame photo the editor was reluctant to go back we all were but we knew we had to this time the photo was that of what appeared to be a little girl no older than the first child she was lying on her stomach her barrettes in a pool of blood next to her her left eye was too popped out and popped and naked except for her underpants her entrails were piled on top of her above another crude cut along her back again the body was on the street and the photographer's shadow was visible very similar in size and shape to the first i had to choke back vomit <laughs> and one intern the only female in the room ran out the show resumed about five seconds after the second photo played squidward went silent as did all sound like it was when this scene started he put his tentacles down and his eyes were now done in hyper realism like the others were in the beginning of the episode they were bleeding bloodshot and pulsating he just stared at the screen as if watching the viewer after about 10 seconds he started sobbing this time not covering his eyes the sound was piercing and loud and, and most fear inducing of all is his sobbing was mixed with screams tears and blood were dripping down his face at a heavy rate the wind sound came back and so did the deep voice laughing and this time the still photo lasted for about five frames the animator was able to stop it on the fourth and backed up this time the photo was of a boy about the same age but this time the scene was different the entrails were just being pulled out from a stomach wound by a large hand the right eye popped and dangling blood trickling down it the animator proceeded it was hard to believe but the next one was different but we couldn't tell what he went on to the next same thing he went on to the first and played them quicker and i lost it i vomit on the floor the animating and sound editors gasped at the freaking screen the five frames were not as if they were five different photos they were they were played out as if they were framed from a video we saw the hand slowly lift out the guts we saw the kid's eyes focus on it we even saw two frames of the kid beginning to blink the lead sound editor told us to stop he had to call on the creator to see this <laughs> mr hillenberg arrived with within about 15 minutes he was confused as to why he was called down here so the editor just continued the episode 
Once the few frames were shown, all screaming and all sound again stopped. Squidward was just staring at the viewer, full frame of the face, for about three seconds. The shot quickly panned out and a, a deep voice said, do it. And we see in Squidward's hands a shotgun. He immediately puts the gun in his mouth and pulls the trigger. Realistic blood and brain matter splatters the freaking wall behind him and his bed and he and he flies back with the force The last five seconds of the episode shows his body on the bed on his side one eye dangling on what's left of his head above the floor Staring blankly at it then the episode ends Mr. Hillenberg is obviously mad at this. He demanded to know what the hell was going on. Most people left the room at this point, so it was just a handful of us to watch it again. Viewing the episode twice only served to imprint the entirety of it into my mind and cause more horrible nightmares. <laughs> I'm sorry. I stayed. The only theory we could think of was the file was edited by someone in the chain from the drawing studio to here. The CTO was called in to analyze what had happened. The analysis of the file did not show it was edited over by new material. However, the timestamp of it was a mere 24 seconds before we began viewing it. All equipment involved was examined for foreign software and hardware as well as glitches as if the timestamp may have glitched and showed the wrong time, but everything checked out fine. We don't know what happened and to this day, nobody does. There was an investigation due to the nature of the photos, but nothing came of it. No child seen was identified, and no clues were gathered from the data involved, nor physical clues in the photo. I never believed in an unexplainable phenomena before, but now I have seen something happen and no one could prove anything about it beyond anecdotal evidence. I think twice about things now.